Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Katie and today I'm gonna take you on a tour of our garden. So I'm gonna show you everything we've got and let you see what we've got out here and growing and show you how it's progressing so far. So it is early in our season. It's May 2022 and we're here in Northern California. So we just got the garden planted a while ago. If you watched our videos, you gotta see us do it twice. So let me show you how things are looking out here and what we're up to today. So this is what it looks like. I've got peppers in this side. Some of them are doing quite well. Like this one's getting quite a bit bigger. So it's kind of nice to see it's growing. It's pretty tall. I haven't trimmed it at all. So that's what it looks like. Some of these little guys are smaller. Now what you do see is I've got a ton of tomato volunteers out here. So I need to go through this garden bed and get that all cleaned up, which that's what I'm out here to do today. But before I got started, I just wanted to show you guys how things are looking. There's another pepper plant there. It looks like it's doing well. Some more over here. This baby pepper plant right here is getting shaded out by this volunteer, so I gotta get rid of that. But some of these pepper plants are looking pretty good. Some of them are still looking pretty tiny. That guy's tiny. But some of them are looking healthy and happy and getting bigger. And I've got flowers. So we've got flowers here. So hopefully pretty soon we'll start seeing some peppers. It's nice to see the season getting started. For the most part, this garden bed is still empty other than it's got weeds that I've got to pull again. We've got a couple of volunteers that I think I'm gonna keep. So let me show you this one over here. This is a volunteer squash. I don't know what it is. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna let it stay and I'm just gonna see what happens this year with it. And then we have one more, let me show you. So right over here, Okay, so right over here, this volunteer squash came up. I don't know what this one is either, but I think I'm gonna let this stay and just see what happens. So now I know the likelihood that this turns out to be something that's true to type or even tastes good is maybe pretty low, but I've got the space and I'm just curious to see how these grow. So I'll continue to share with you guys what happens. Okay, you guys, let me show you my little bean plant. This is the first time I've grown bush beans, and look what's on it. We have a little bean. Another one right here, so cute. Okay, so I do have one thing that's not going so great. It's my okra plants. They look just terrible, so let me show you. So here's one here. Something's eating it. I don't know what's happening. Here's one right here. It's looking pretty pitiful. This guy, something is munching all over it. Here's another one. They're just looking pretty sad. Here's another one. I'm gonna get the weeds out of here and see if they'll live. Like here's another guy. They're just, just not doing good at all. I don't know what's happening. I did good last year growing them. So we'll see. My job today is to get these weeds all pulled out and get all these volunteer tomatoes pulled out, things we don't want, clean these beds up again, and just see if these will look any better. Okay, so now let me just orient you. I showed you guys that side. Now I'm gonna show you guys this side of the raised beds. So right here we have a ground cherry. This is my first year growing ground cherries. This one's actually looking really good. I've got some basil rainbow cherry tomatoes back here along the back have them grow up that trellis so these four are kind of small they're the rainbow cherry tomatoes i have some san marzano tomatoes planted here and then i have some beefsteak tomatoes back there again those are going to grow up that trellis i'm just going to train them to do that and some additional beefsteaks there in the front so that's what we have going on in this garden bed and kind of same story I'm showing you this before I get the weeds pulled. So that's what I'm gonna be out here doing this morning. All right, you guys, it's windy out here again. What's new? This is like every weekend in Northern California. I don't know what's with the wind. Okay, so I showed you these raised garden beds and what we've got going on there. Let me take you on to these next ones over here. I'm gonna show you what I have going on behind me. We've got some cucumbers planted and I'm so excited. I've got my Malbar spinach coming up. So let me show you those little sprouts. I showed you this garden bed over here, so let me take you over here to this one behind me, and I'm gonna show you what I've got going on there. Mostly what I have in here is de la squash, so I'm hoping this one does great. We're trying to take such good care of it because we want as much de la squash as we can get, and I've got one little cherry tomato, so let me show you. 
so this guy right here, that's my cherry tomato. Looks like he's doing pretty good. And my goal is for that to just grow up this trellis so that as I come in that gate there, I can just pick all those cherry tomatoes. And then next we have de la Cotta squash. So there's a bunch of de la Cotta squash growing in here and hopefully that will do well. I've definitely planted it super close together. So I'm gonna try to just fertilize it well and I'm just gonna hope that it does really well. And I'm gonna hope that it'll just grow right up this trellis and produce a ton of squash. So we do have some volunteer plants coming up here. I really don't know what they are. I'm not sure. So I think maybe they're gonna be cantaloupe. I'm not sure if they'll do well, but I'm gonna let those stay as long as they don't crowd out my de la Cotta squash. So we'll see how that works. All right, now I'm on the opposite side of the garden, the garden that we call our back animal garden. And I wanna show you how the beans are doing. So if you guys watched the previous videos, you saw that I put these great bean plants out. They were so big. I had been taking care of them for a while and then we ended up losing them in the frost. So I had to restart them. So let me show you what we have now and how it's going. They've sprouted, so I'm happy about that. And we've still got plenty of time. So we'll get some green beans. Let me show you what they look like. All right, here's all my green bean babies. So they've sprouted, they look okay. There's some weeds in there, I gotta get rid of those weeds. But there's my green beans, there's several of them over there. So it looks like we're okay. Not as dense as maybe I originally planted them, but I'm sure we'll be fine. And I'm definitely gonna save a lot more seed this year than I did last year. Okay, this side we have just a couple things. So I have two little sage plants right there. Those did get impacted by the freeze, but they seem to still be alive. We've got some random mushrooms growing out here. This is an eggplant, and then there's an eggplant there. They don't look amazing, but if I recall, they kind of start out slow, and then when it gets really hot, they produce well. So we'll see how these go. I do have more eggplant in the greenhouse. I'm debating about maybe planting another one or two. And then I have of all the basil I planted, there's just like a tiny little bit of basil, if you can see it right here, just a little bit. I don't know if that's gonna grow or not. It's just kind of been sitting there for a while. So we'll see how that does over the next few weeks. Okay, you guys, the last part out here in our animal garden, in our back animal garden, is our ground garden, the what we've got planted in the ground. It's a mess. It, there's just so many weeds. I'm gonna show you, we've got some plants that are doing okay. We've got some plants that are producing, it looks like, already, and it's early, so that's good. But I have no idea this season how we're gonna keep up with these weeds. We definitely didn't do a good job last year, like we tried, and this year, I think we're even off to a worse start. So let me show you what we have going on. If nothing else, it'll make you feel better about any weeds you have out in your garden. Okay, you guys, here is our ground garden. So you saw us just rototill this up and plant. Then we had the freeze. So we lost a lot of plants that were really good size. And our strategy was we were going to have good size plants and then be able to put some type of mulch down and hopeful, you know, that that would help with the weeds. Unfortunately, we had the freeze. So we ended up losing the bulk of our plants. We did have some replacement yellow squash to put in. So you can see these are a little bit bigger. So this guy here, he's got some flowers on it. Um, this one has some flowers and even starting a fruit. There's one right over there that's starting to put a fruit on. So some of the plants are doing okay, but there's just grass and weeds. Our corn, like we have the corn did live through the frost, so that's good. And you can see some over there. You can see some peeking through, but there's just so many weeds. We're gonna have to try to tackle these weeds. And we've tilled up this whole area. So there's not really good like walking space in between. So if you're gonna do something similar, I would certainly recommend that you leave yourself some space to kind of walk through it. Um, we don't have a good solution. Like I said, we thought we had a strategy this season and things went a little bit differently. Okay, here's another angle. So on this left side, all of those should be yellow squash. We did put some extra yellow squash on this row right here. That should be a spaghetti squash. We had one good size spaghetti squash left. And then that's yellow squash. So we have a couple other plants here that you can identify between the weeds. This one's a zucchini. So I luckily had one extra zucchini plant in our greenhouse after the freeze. So that's ours. Then we've got a bunch of tiny little zucchini that we cut back. If you watched the previous video, you probably saw us like cut back all the damaged parts. And so this row has zucchini in it. And I did buy those two replacement plants when I was at the store just so that we'd have a little insurance policy and have some zucchini because that's one of our favorites. 
I wanted to explain a little bit about why we have the garden in the ground. So we mostly used raised beds for our garden and the reason that we do that is we already know that we're going to have a hard time with weeds and we don't have a ton of time to be out in our garden pulling the weeds and maintaining them. So we put in the garden in the ground hoping that we'd get a ton of production but we the first year so the first year we had it we learned pretty quickly it's a disaster with weeds so we decided i'm just going to plant a bunch of stuff there that's really for the animals and hopefully it can overpower the weeds and produce and so far that's worked pretty well we did make a real effort this year to do it differently and try to prevent the weeds but you can see we're losing the battle so we're going to tackle this a little bit and try to see if we can manage it but i don't think there's any chance we're going to win over all these weeds Maybe next year we'll try a different strategy. But what we grow in the ground, so we do have corn in there. Gary's hopeful that maybe we'll produce some corn. We haven't had good success with corn so far, so it's kind of hit and miss maybe. But what we mostly grow in that ground garden is all of the squash, like a ton of yellow squash for the animals. So they like it when I'm out here in the garden, it's their treat, it's kind of like a supplement treat for them. So we try to put a lot of squash in that ground garden so that the animals always have a healthy treat. So I'm walking in from our back animal garden to show you guys kind of the greenhouse in the next area. And this windmill here, it's helping me out by telling me that it's super windy today. So behind me, we have some additional raised beds. They're in a different location on our property, but let me show you what I've got going on in there. So this is one of our raised beds. I've got some tomatoes growing here. That is a tomato. That's beets. More tomatoes, 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 a little volunteer carrot, and then a bigger tomato. So I need to get something going and kind of for these guys to have some support. I expect this to be completely overgrown, but it's out here by my greenhouse, so it's kind of easy to access. These are all red onions. I have one little tomato and then red onions. So hopefully we'll have a pretty good harvest here. I don't have anything in that pot. And then over here in this bin, so I planted a lot of garlic and I don't know, my garlic doesn't seem to be doing so well. You can see it's here. But so I went out and put in a bigger tomato plant here. There's a little baby squash plant I put in there. That's a butterbush squash. So put that there. We'll see if he does okay right there. And then a bunch of onions. So these are a variety of different kinds of onions that I put in all over here. They seem to be doing great for whatever reason. My garlic isn't loving this location show you a couple of beds we have for strawberries the greenhouse and then like a little experiment I have set up going over there so I'll show you what I've got going on so this is one of our strawberry beds right here and I will take you over and show you where our greenhouse is and where we have a couple more beds so we've got one bed on each side of our greenhouse that has strawberries in it that one and then this one over here. So here's our greenhouse and on each side, so on this side we have strawberries and on that side we also have strawberries. We just put all these strawberries in this year. So I don't expect we're gonna get a huge harvest this year, but we're hopeful for next year. So let me take you over here to what I'm calling kind of my experiment section of the garden. Hey guys, so behind me I've got the greenhouse and I've got a little experiment area set up. I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could grow in containers. So when we started gardening, I had to grow in containers. I didn't have any property. We didn't have a big garden. I had a backyard. And I decided to start growing in containers. We didn't grow a lot. We grew like tomatoes, things like that. So I'm trying a bunch of different things here in these containers to see how they work. And I'll show you guys. So let me show you what I have going on. So these two are bell peppers. This one's a little bit smaller. And then this one's quite a bit bigger. It's doing pretty well. This one is a super hot pepper that I bought. And the guy that I bought it from, he had a ton of beautiful plants. He said he grows all of his plants in this pot, doesn't change them out. So I'm gonna just give this a try. I've never tried it, so we'll see how it goes. Tomatoes, so I've got some beefsteak tomatoes and I've got those so that I could just try to train them up this post. That's what I'm gonna try to do. There's another beefsteak tomato. It's kind of flopped over there, I just planted. I need to tie it up so that it will grow up that post. This is my Anaheim pepper. This Anaheim pepper I brought in late last season after frost, so I lost pretty much most of my plants. This did get some frost damage, and I stuck it right in this pot. It, there was just peat moss in it, so nothing special about the dirt, really not even great soil, just peat moss, and I kept it watered all winter, and I did stick it in the greenhouse, and it just sat there looking pretty much dead. 
it started sprouting as soon as the weather got nice. So I was gonna put it out in my garden and then I decided, because I was already starting to see, like it looked like it was doing really well. Now I did not trim this back. I didn't do anything to it. So it is this big and you can see all the growth that's happening. We're early in May right now here in Northern California and it's already starting to get little flowers on it. So I am so hopeful that we'll have a good pepper harvest off of this plant. And if we do, so you guys can see the flowers, but if we do, then I'm really going to try to save my pepper plants because these are the hardest for me to grow. You have to start them so early. So I'm really hopeful that this works out great. And then that brings me over here to these guys. So we've got one more pepper plant right there and then one tiny little baby right there. So this is just kind of my experiment section just off my greenhouse. I'm hoping that I'll be able to keep these watered, keep them healthy, and we'll see how they do, because I'm definitely excited to see if I can grow in pots. If I can, then that's really gonna be a good indication that if you guys are trying to grow somewhere in pots, you'll be able to do it too. Now, I will tell you just a little bit about what these are. So these pots right here, we bought evergreen trees and I just saved the pots, so I'm reusing them. They are a little bit bigger than like a five gallon bucket. I'm sharing with you guys some flowers along the path that I take from our greenhouse to our backyard garden. And of course, our cute puppy dog, Sammy. So just as we head out into this backyard garden, I can show you what's going on up there. I thought I would show you that we did go ahead and trim our rose bushes so we can get into our garden. We had almost like no clearance left. So let me just show you what that looks like, you guys. We trimmed up all the roses and of course it cuts off all the flowers. But now we've got a path and we can actually get into the garden without getting stuck by all the thorns. Okay, so here we are. I'm just gonna jump right in and show you what we've got and what's been making some progress growing out here. We start with this garden bin. I'll show you what we've got going on there. The De La Cotta squash is doing really well, so I'm super excited about that. Hopefully it does really well everywhere we have it planted. We're trying to grow just an abundance of that this year. And I've got peppers in this bin, so let me show you how they're doing up close. So I got my basil, and then I have De La Cotta squash. So there's two plants. There's one pretty big one, and one a little bit smaller. And the big one already has flowers on it, you guys. And then I've got all my peppers. So I got all the peppers right here. This guy was one that took a ton of frost damage, so he's still there. That's a Carolina Reaper. More peppers. More peppers. Okay, let's check out this raised bed, and we've got tomatoes in this one. So let's see how they're doing. Okay, this side here, I've got a couple of cucumbers. These are the Armenian cucumbers. Just two of those there. Then I have a tomato plant here. I have three little ground cherries, if you guys can see over there, three little ground cherries. And then the rest of what's in this bed are beefsteak tomatoes. So these all got frost damage, except for this one. Let me show you this one all the way back here. We replaced it. So it's definitely doing a lot better. It looks super healthy. These guys look kind of sad. Maybe we should put, I'm not sure if we're gonna replace these or not, or just leave them. Okay, you guys, let me show you this bed behind me. All right, so in this bed, I have all my green onions here on the edge. These are all my Roma tomatoes. And then I've got a couple cucumbers. These had frost damage. We'll see how they do. They're still growing, but it looks like maybe, I don't know if they're gonna make it. We'll see. I didn't have any more replacements, so it is what it is. And then I'll show you this side over here. I've got some peppers. So these two, are super hot peppers so i'm excited to see how those do and then all these are orange habaneros let's move on to this bed i have a bunch of peppers back here so let me show you what those look like okay you guys there's a theme here so more peppers so let me show you what we've got in this bed so there's two watermelons that one back there is doing pretty well and then this little guy looks like he's still alive doing okay most of these are bell peppers here then some jalapeno peppers. So we've got some jalapeno peppers here. Move over here, we've got some Anaheims, some habaneros, things like that, other kind of peppers. And I'll show you right here, this little guy, he already has flowers. So there's already flowers. Okay, so let me give you a better look at these ground cherries. So they're real tiny. 
They're these Aunt Molly ground cherries. So there's three of them here and then I have one of them out in the very back animal yard. So hopefully those do well. All right, you guys, so you gotta see our full garden tour. And the purpose of me being out here this morning is actually to get all these weeds pulled. And most of this stuff is just volunteer. So I'm getting it all pulled and sticking it in a container because I'm going to give this to the animals. So I'm just trying to work through this garden bed so I can get this all cleaned up. And the veggies have plenty of room to grow and flourish. Hey you guys, the wind's picking up out here, so I'm going to call it a day for now, but I wanted to show you the progress I made. So about like a gallon pitcher, full, and it's just full of these tomato volunteers. So typically I would just throw the stuff on the ground on the side, but I've got some little buddies back here, and they're going to be pretty happy to get these microgreens. So let me show you what the garden bed looks like now. Okay, so I got all those volunteers all pulled out. It's actually not really hard to pull them out. There's just a ton of them, so it takes a while to do it. But it's much easier in these raised garden beds to pull out all the volunteers and all the weeds so that the veggies have plenty of space. So much easier than the garden in the ground. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. It's getting super windy, so we're going to get in and get out of the wind. But we'll be back next week and give you another update on how our garden is doing. Hopefully, you've got something going so you can grow right along with us. See you guys later. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our channel and definitely hit that notification bell so you can be alerted when we release a new video each week. See you guys next week.